Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. The UN Food Security Agency says world food prices jumped nearly 13% in March to a new record high as the war in Ukraine caused turmoil in markets for staple grains and edibles. Also, the price of food in Nigeria are experiencing a constant increase, in particular for maize and gari. The price of white gari grew by 60% compared to the previous year, while the price for yellow maize grain by 52%. And all the food products that have recorded the highest growth in prices are beans, beef, palm oil, egg. Together with food further items that have experienced a price increase and non-alcoholic beverages, uh, clothing and footwear, as well as housing, water, electricity, and other fuel issues. Moda Yusuf is a CEO Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, let, let's share from your knowledge. What would you say is responsible for the cost of um, or the increase in the prices of food and other items in Nigeria? Well, uh, before the recent Russian aggression in Ukraine, we have been having a serious challenges with inflation. Food inflation has been consistently high even before this new round of uh, challenges with energy prices. And quite a number of factors have been responsible. First, we had the challenge of insecurity, uh, which has affected agricultural production across the country. But this was more pronounced in the northern part of the country. And as you know, the northern part is more or less like the food basket of the nation. So the insecurity issue was a major domestic problem that contributed particularly to food inflation. Oh. Then of course we have the challenge of the cost of transportation. Uh, most of the vehicles that move these food items and even other raw materials across the country. Most of them are powered by diesel. Diesel has jumped by over 300 percent in the last one to two months. And all of these additional costs of transportation have to be transferred to the consumer in form of high price. So the cost of energy uh, has been a major issue. And when we talk about energy, it's not only diesel. Even the cost of gas, the cost of aviation fuel, the cost of kerosene, all of these costs have gone up dramatically. So to the extent that we use this energy to support some production activities, uh, invariably have the challenge of high price. All then right. we have the challenge of exchange rate. Exchange rate has also depreciated significantly over time. I mean, as we speak now, we are talking about Naira to dollar, about 5 nights. As the time, it was even getting close to almost 600. And this has a pass-through or knock-on effect on practically all the production activities across practically all sectors of the economy. Then you have the issue of the scarcity of foreign exchange effect. If you talk to many of the major manufacturers, they have a problem accessing foreign exchange at even whatever so, that is also impeding their production capacity. It's affecting capacity utilization and therefore affecting production, affecting supply. And once you have a drop in supply, you have higher price. 
Then you have this external factor, which is the Ukraine-Russian war. That again, because of the strategic position of Russia and Ukraine, especially in the area of food production. I want to talk about food here. What is relevant as far as this war is concerned is wheat and corn. Because these two countries account for a sizable percentage of global production of wheat and global production of corn. So again, you use the wheat for flour, you use flour for bread. So again, that's a pathway effect as a result of that conflict. That is also affecting those. And when you are quoting the UN statement, that is the angle from which the UN is coming from. Then, of course, you have other, other local challenges around the port, you know, getting goods out of the port. You have challenges around import duties. Some of the import duties that the government imposes on some of these goods, particularly raw materials, are also too high. All right, Mr. Muda Yusuf, if, so, if, so, I, if so I could just butt in. The of both the global and domestic All right. uh, factors. All right, uh, if I got you correctly, you talked about external forces uh, which have also contributed and um, the issues um, in um, Ukraine and Russia. But one would have thought that, that would, it would also have presented an opportunity for the country. From what we read in the news, uh, uh, you know, EU um, is importing 40% of um, Nigeria's um, gas, uh, actually demanding more. That, in other way, should be bringing more forex into the country, don't you think so? Mr. Yusuf, are you still there? I'm here. Can you come again, please? I, when you were talking about all of the issues that have contributed to the um, rising inflation in the world, you talked about um, external forces uh, with what's happening in the um, uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. One would have thought that Nigeria should have um, gotten some sort of um, opportunities to boost um, its economy. In the news just yesterday, we read that um, the European Union is um, importing 40% of Nigeria's gas, also demanding more. That, in other ways, should be bringing more forex into the country. Don't you agree? No, you are very correct. But again, we have mismanaged our oil and gas sector. Because for many oil producing countries, actually, they are celebrating at this time, celebrating in court. Because they are making more money from the high crude oil price. Currently, for practically oil producing countries, they are experiencing what we can call a windfall as far as foreign exchange and this is concerned. Unfortunately, Nigeria is a, a peculiar case. First, we cannot even meet our offer quota because of the challenges of oil test, this uh, attack on the uh, oil installation, and all sorts of problems in the oil producing area. There are also policy issues. You know, we have been grappling with the uh, petroleum industry act, the petroleum industry team, for over a decade. The whole idea was to put a very good investment environment for investors to not and gas. But we are dragging this, dragging this until uh, we managed to put it through just last year. So that affected investment in the oil and gas. Again, for that reason, we are not able to reap the full benefit of this current one for. Then on the oil importation side, our downstream sector, which includes petroleum refining, pipeline, transportation, and all of that, have practically collapsed. Again, because of policy problems. Because the policy environment did not encourage investment 
to invest in refineries. So all of that has now contributed to a situation that rather than benefit from the current windfall, we are being penalized by it. It's more or less like a cost now. Because we are spending a fortune to be important for the long product. Only yesterday, on the floor of the National Assembly, the Senate President was reading a letter from the President asking for supplementary appropriation of almost four trillion for oil subsidy. How much is the how much is the revenue of government? So the way we have managed our oil and gas sector is what has put us in this mess. Okay, we talked about that. For the yes, time, we, have, we have some clear opportunities in gas. The Nigeria NLNG is doing fairly well. But again, we didn't invest fast and, 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 and big enough in the gas sector. Yusuf, because we don't have more Mr. Yusuf, let's, um, let's quickly take a look at this, you know, uh, thought pattern. Uh, the Farmers Association at the time in Oyo State had expressed concern over the prices, I mean, of uh, farm inputs. And they said in 2022, the cost of, you know, food commodities will be on the high. And so if this is the reason that they have stated how do we then tackle this issue of uh, you have uh, food prices being on the high? Because as much as we want to make reference to the um, conflicts that's happening right now in Ukraine and uh, Russia, you would also want to agree that this is actually a recent thing. So how do we tackle this? Well, the, the domestic factors or the domestic variables are things that are within our control. Because just as you said, there are factors that are external, there are factors that are domestic. Some of the domestic factors, which is part of what I mentioned earlier, is insecurity. If you don't have a good handle on how to secure our, our environment, particularly the agricultural producing community. Many people have fed their farms. These are the people growing the food. Many of them are now in IDP camps. And the situation is not getting better. So dealing with insecurity is one major issue that you have to do. If you want if you want for great the challenge of food inflation. Then oh. domestic cost of transportation. Unfortunately, we cannot separate that from energy price. Because all the trucks that are moving goods around, they are being powered by diesel. So if there is any way we can get the diesel price to come down, that will not only help the cost of transportation, it will also help to bring down the cost of production. Because many manufacturing firms now have increased their cost. I mean, they have increased their prices. The cost right. of the increase in energy cost. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Muda Yusuf. Uh, we could actually go on and on concerning all of the issues and plaguing the economy and, of course, the riding, rising food inflation and general price levels in the country, but we are completely out of time. We want to say a very big thank you to you for all of the thoughts that you have shared, and we hope that over time we'll begin to put all of this you know, into our, you know, our economy so we can actually begin to see all those changes that we desire. Once again, very big thank you to you, uh, Mr. Muda Yusuf. Mola Yusuf is the CEO Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, CPPE. And that's the size of the show for today. Uh, thank you so much for being there, uh, for all the support and uh, for watching. My name is Justin Akadone. And you can be part of the conversation via Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. 
many thanks for watching. I am Messi Boko. Have a great day.